we are dealing purely in the realm of speculation here as to what may have happened at the World Trade Center. Obviously, a major incident occurred here on the upper floors of one of the World Trade Center towers. You can see multiple openings and flames coming out of at least two sides of the tower at the World Trade Center. And we just ahead, got a report that the Associated Press is now reporting that it was an aircraft. So that's one more witness weighing in, or at least one more source weighing in on the fact that it was an aircraft of some kind. And as Don Daler reported, this occurred about 15 or 20 minutes ago in downtown New York. Uh, and New York time, that would have been about uh, 20 minutes or a quarter of nine. This is a time when literally tens of thousands of people are coming to work uh, at the World Trade Center. Looking at the top of the building, you mentioned there's an observation center, and uh, I don't know what time it opens, but I think it opens fairly early, and people are up there at all hours of the day. Families, tourists coming in to look at the city of New York from atop it. Also, there, I don't know if this is the building that has the restaurant on top of it as well, but in those high floors, there are places where tourists team in the morning, even if the regular workers weren't in. And we remind you again that there was a terrorist bomb that did go off at the World Trade Center years ago. It was down in the garage level, but we have no Obviously reason no indication that this could have been related to that. that way. Right. Now, Don Daler, ABC's Don Daler, who is on the scene. Don, just give me some description again of what, you're, uh, what you can see now. What we're seeing, it, it appears that the, there is more and more fire and smoke enveloping the very top of the building. And as fire crews are descending on this area, it, it, it does not appear that there's any kind of a, an effort up there yet. Now remember, oh my God. Oh my God. That looks like a second plane. Dear has just I didn't see a plane go in. That, that just exploded. We I, just saw another plane coming saw, in from the side. You did. I did that was out of absolute Yes, and that's view. the second explosion. You could see the plane come in just from the right-hand side of the screen. So this looks like it oh is Lord. some sort of a concerted Deliberate. effort to attack the World Trade Center that is underway in downtown New York. We will see that scene again just to make sure we saw what we thought. We're going to we give seeing. you a replay of what we just saw. And I, I must admit, I thought it was some sort of fire equipment coming in or some sort of observation plane. But it was obviously designed to attack the World Trade Center. We're going to show you that. Here's a replay of the videotape. In a second, that looks like a good-sized plane came in and hit the World Trade Center from the other side. So this is obviously, or would seem to be, and again, I'm dealing in speculation, but it would seem like there is a concerted attack against one of the to towers of the World Trade Center underway. We had seen a plane coming in from the other direction earlier. I'd noticed it had you, Charlie. I didn't know if it was that plane that then circled wide and came back from another direction, but we all watched it. And I just assumed. Don, that could you hear that? Could you hear that plane as it came in? I did not hear that plane, but I had to step inside the window because the the fire crews were so loud, the sirens that I couldn't hear you. I got you. I did see the explosion, but the side of the building that the plane entered was just outside of my view. So all I saw was this huge fireball and the explosion. Well, the shot that we've got is now just from one side of the World Trade Center. But this is the shot again. This is moments ago of this, of this second plane coming in. And this is now in slow motion. Oh, this is terrifying. Awful. To watch powerless is a horror. All right, we're going to go back to live coverage. Now you're looking at live pictures, and there is the second fire, uh, which was brought about by this second plane that hit the tower. And, Don, from everything I can see, it was the same tower that was hit the first time, right? No, it's the second tower. It's, it's the, the other tower. It is the other tower that was hit. My so mistake. They, they targeted it. From, your, from what I'm seeing on the television, from your view, they are... The, they, the two towers are, are in, one is in front of the other one, but it was definitely the second tower that was hit about halfway down, not quite as high. And from my view here, it does not seem to be as 
as big as much damage as the original. It, it, I don't know if that means it was not as big a a plane or what. I did not see the plane go in, but it's I mean, it's horrendous damage. But it doesn't seem to be the gaping hole through two sides of the building like on the on the first one. Don, from your vantage point, can you see if there are people coming out down below? I'm, I, I can't see the, uh, the bottom of the base of the buildings. There's the wider shot of the two towers. Now, both towers have been hit by planes now in the last half hour. And again, I say we are, we are totally powerless in knowing what's going on here, except that it would obviously appear this is, it can't be a coincidence like this. It would obviously be some sort of a concerted attack. Uh, against both towers of the World Trade Center. This is the, again, we're going to show for the third time this tape of the, uh, of the airplane flying in and hitting the World Trade Center. This is slow-mo, slow motion of the plane coming in and hitting the obscured second tower of the World Trade Center. And you can see flame coming out, and I can't see the plane coming down. You know, if it just Charlie, lands, that is, that's a commercial-sized jet. That is, that did not look like. No, that's a good-sized airplane. Yes. Yeah, that is. That's not a a little commuter plane. That was a good-sized jet. And I can't tell if it actually flew into the building or if it just uh, clipped it with a wing. And if it did, of course, then there's the frightening prospect that the plane would have crashed right on the streets of very busy streets of New York. Yeah. It seems, and um, this is. A small hope that the fire may have gone out from the first site. I don't know if we can get the camera in close or not. It doesn't mean that the smoke isn't still terrifying and deadly. Diane, I can see from here the orange flames. The, the fire has not gone out. In fact, it's, it looks as if it's encompassing a part of the building that was not initially part of the, the original explosion. I can see it moving over to the left side, which would be the east side of the, the first building almost all the way over to the edge. The, the back side is totally enveloped in, in flames that I can see from here. Yes, it, with that kind of smoke, there's got to be an awful lot of flame in there. And, and, and I think all of us have thought at one point or another about the fact that these buildings, though they are so majestic as they stand above the skyline of New York, that it's very difficult for emergency workers or firefighters to, to uh, fight these. We have a, a, a witness who was called in uh, to speak to us. His name is Karim Hiroki. Mr. Hiroki, did you, as I understand, they're telling me in my ear, is it, is it true that you witnessed the first plane hit the tower? Yeah. Could you, could you give me some sort of a description of it? I was sitting in my car here in Greenwich, you know. I just saw the plane is coming down from the left side and going straight to the building, you know, and going inside. It actually went inside the building? Excuse me? It went in, it flew right into the building. I saw it coming from the left and I saw the plane coming through to the building. I go inside. It's a small plane. You say small plane. Was it a jet? Excuse me? Was it a jet plane? No, no. It was plane. You know, like the, they teach the, the people for the, the plane is what, like a small plane, you know? It's that kind of plane. You mean like a, uh, a small single or double engine? Uh, yeah, uh, prop double plane. engine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. And, and it actually went into the building there on the upper yeah, floor. Yeah, going into the building. And I never saw that plane before. It's like something. I don't know. It's like. They walk with the mold. Or I never saw a plane like that before. Yeah. All he right, Mr. My car. He's nice. Mr. Hiroki, you are down in that area right now, then. Yeah, I'm in Greenwich here on North Moore Street. Can you can you tell uh, if there's a large number of, uh, of of fire equipment and uh, and emergency equipment on the scene? Excuse me. Can you see fire equipment or emergency equipment on the scene? I don't know. The fire is upstairs in the building, and the second plane is, is, is where the, the, the other building came. And did you see the second plane come in? Yeah, just... I, I saw, yeah, I saw the second plane. is no boom. I, I, I heard, you know. I just wake up my head like that. I saw it inside, too. And that second plane much larger than the first? Same. The same. Two boats. Both same. They're the, both the same? Yeah. Because the pictures we see, the second plane looks rather large. No, it's, not like, it's going inside, too. It's going inside on the building, too. And, and the second hole, it's smaller than the other one. And it actually also penetrated the building. You could see it go in. Yeah, it's inside. It's inside. It's now, inside. No plane is outside. Nothing. Now, can you see if there are people fleeing the building? We don't have shots yet from street level. Can you see if there are people leaving the building? No, I can't see because I told you, I'm in North Moran, Greenwich. I just saw up the building. I can't saw down there. So you're in Greenwich Village? Yeah, I'm in, no, in Greenwich Street and North Moran. Oh, I see, on Greenwich Street. Okay, yeah. I, I can... That's... that's uh, 
just to locate people who don't know New York, that is right in the vicinity, right nearby, um, but not actually on the site of the, uh, of the World Trade Centers. Uh, ABC's Peter Jennings is uh, at the anchor desk uh, uptown here in New York and is now in position. Peter, I suspect you are looking at exactly the same pictures. Well, I know you're looking at the same pictures we are. We are, Charlie. We've been watching it from the beginning. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll be watching this for much of the day. There is chaos in New York at the moment. There have been not one but two incidents, as Charlie and Diane have so ably reported so far. The second one coming at 9.03, uh, when television was on live, and you could see what was clearly a jet aircraft flying into the second trade tower. Both trade towers now, these 110-story high towers, have now been hit. There is chaos here, uh, or there's chaos in the immediate area. There is confusion in Washington because now everybody is engaged in this. The Pentagon is involved in this. All the intelligence services are engaged at this in the morning. And as we look at those towers, let's just simply keep looking at these towers this morning. Um, and if you have the feed at home, I actually don't have it here, so somebody could please make sure that I have the photo picture of what's going on. Um, the various airports in the, in the area, uh, Newark and LaGuardia particularly, have already suspended operations. Uh, the city asked the Federal Aviation Administration for permission to close down airspace um, in all of New York, uh, lest there be a third aircraft or some other untoward incident involved. Um, and ABC's John Miller is with me here, who's been listening uh, efficiently to all of his police sources. And John, I gather the city is ordering a major evacuation from a number of public buildings and a number of these very high-profile targets. They're going into uh, what they call an Archangel operation, which is a code name for uh, essentially a major lockdown of the city, evacuating the United Nations building, the municipal building, City Hall, Gracie Mansion, which is the mayor's residence, all things that could be considered potential targets, because obviously because of the nature of this with two incidents, uh, there is the potential that this is a, a double act of terrorism mm -hmm. and they are worried about other targets. All right, let's go back to the building itself, John. You worked the police radio, if you would, for just a minute. The FBI is already investigating reports that a plane was actually hijacked uh, before this uh, collision, this incident, this uh, attack uh, occurred at the World Trade Towers. Uh, in Washington at the moment, the presumption is uh, that this is a terrorist attack, according to ABC's John McCarthy. though it's very difficult at the moment uh, for anybody to get a clear appreciation of what has actually happened because it has happened so quickly. First attack coming just before 9 o'clock Eastern Time, and the second attack, which we could all watch, those of us who are watching television, uh, occurring at 9.03, just three minutes after. Uh, the president is in Florida, and he has already been told of what is happening. Um, these trade towers have always been have always been, and you may have heard it already this morning, uh, regarded as a prime target for this particular act of terrorism. As you know, there was terrorism at the World Trade Center before 1993. Uh, there was a huge bombing attack on the Trade Centers. These are the two at the southwestern corner of the island of Manhattan, um, just prime pieces of real estate of interest to anyone who wishes to hit either New York City or the United States in a very, very visible and vulnerable way. We have with us at the moment Lindsay Grimm, a witness who was in the building on the phone. Lindsay, can you hear me? I hear you. Can you tell me what you know? Well, I actually, just to clear things up, I wasn't in the building. I was in the World Financial Center, which is directly behind it. Okay. And I was, I was, uh, on the, our part of the building faces the section, um, the courtyard where the, where the World Trade Center is. So we ran to the window right after we, we, we felt this kind of this sonic boom as if it were an earthquake and something just wasn't right. We ran to the window and somebody yelled, oh my God, a plane just flew into the World Trade Center. Is this what we think of as the first one or the second one, Lindsay? Uh, it was the first one because I was actually outside for the second one. And the first one appears to have gone into the southern tower, am I correct? Correct. And the second one, did you see the second one? I, was, I had my back facing. I was running as fast as I was. Well, not running, but walking at a brisk pace away from the two buildings when I heard it. And people just started screaming and running. Now, you know the area fairly well working down there. Is, is 9 o'clock in the morning the time when people have gathered in very large number? People get there earlier, get there later? Yeah, I actually just happen. I usually get here a little after 9, and I happen to be here early for a, morning this mo uh, for a meeting this morning. So, yeah, I mean, it's... You, you see the general amount of traffic mm. about 9 o'clock. Is that when it happened, right at 9? No, just before and just after 9. Okay. When, in that there have been two. Can you see outside at the moment as to anything I'm, that's I'm happening? Out, I am outside. And what do you, where are you and what do you see? I am west of the two buildings, 
looking directly at them, and it's, it's difficult to look at. I'll tell you that much. This is not an area which is easy to reach for emergency services. These two buildings, Hug, uh, Hudson River, there's only the, uh, the West Side Drive that comes up there. Is there a large amount of emergency equipment descending on the place? There sure is. As soon as I got out of the building, it's obviously the first thing you're surrounded by is, is siren noise everywhere. And you can hear it coming by now, even still. Anything else you know that you'd like to add? Uh, just as I was coming out of the building, um, I heard somebody sort of ushering people away, and they were saying, you guys got to get out of here, it's a bomb. Many thanks, Lindsey Grimm, who saw this occurring, at least the first, uh, hesitate to call it an attack. The first incident, we'll continue to call it for now, and very much the second one now. That's what it looks like. Both of the towers in the Twin Trade Towers are now on fire. We have no idea whatsoever uh, the the measure of casualties inside or the measure of damage inside, though you can only imagine it. The New York City of Office of Emergency Management said to us a short while ago they do not know what happened yet. I um, want to check in very quickly with the President of the United States, John Cochran, who is the President in Florida. John? Peter, as you know, the President's down in Florida talking about education. He got up out of his uh, hotel suite this morning, was about to leave. Reporters saw the White House Chief of Staff, Andy Card, whisper into his ear. Then reporters said to the President, do you know what's going on in New York? He said he did and said he will have something to say about it later. His first event is about a half an hour at a, an elementary school in Sarasota, Florida. Thanks, John. John Cochran with the President. President's in Florida today pushing his education reform. It will get wiped off of the agenda today in view of this extraordinarily serious accident. For those of you who don't know the Twin Trade Towers, and it's a popular destination for tourists when they come to New York City, it has financial offices in it, it has government offices, <clears throat> it has lots of access on the top, um, above where this accident, actually, where this incident actually occurred, where tourists come. Um, it's one of the great views in New York City, and people gather there, certainly at the foot of the building, fairly early in the morning, to be able to go and see it. The two collisions, the two incidents have occurred about two-thirds of the way up. Um, John Miller, we haven't, <coughs> excuse me, we haven't had an aircraft fly into a building in New York, as far as I know, since just after the Second World War, when the Empire State Building, when it flew into the Empire State Building. That's right, a, a B-52 flew into the Empire State Building uh, then, and uh, this, is, uh, this is really the first time there's been anything like that since. John, I was listening as you and, and uh, Chris Isham, the head of our investigative unit, wandered up here to the rim just a short while ago to saying, one of you, I think, this is something they've been waiting to happen. Who are you talking about? What are you talking about? What we were talking about is uh, there's been a great uh, frustration since the bombing of the World Trade Center, which the suspects later told federal authorities w were intended to take the building down, that it didn't have a larger effect. And U.S. intelligence, FBI uh, people for years have heard that they've always wanted to try and finish that job off um, to take the buildings out and uh, that it was another viable target. Interestingly, ironically, whatever you want to call it, the World Trade Center just hired two weeks ago the head of the FBI's National Security Division for Counterterrorism in New York to augment and take over their security, pretty much aware of the level of threat that this is as a symbolic target. One of the things that anybody mounting security in the World Trade Center himself um, will not be able to necessarily appreciate is what has happened at some distance. And there are a couple of reports, speculative at the moment, drifting around, including one on the Associated Press, which says the FBI is investigating reports of a plane hijacking uh, just before the World Trade Center actually crashed. And John McCarthy, our national security correspondent, is with us in Washington. John, what do you know? Peter, we do hear that uh, there was a hijacking. It is not clear where that hijacking occurred at this point, uh, but it is one of the many things that U.S. Mm -hmm. officials are scrambling to try to get a handle on at this point. Anything else, John? What happens at the Pentagon at a moment like this? I know everybody springs into action, but what do they do? What happens is uh, there is a particular counterterrorism cell uh, within the Joint Chiefs of Staff that goes into an emergency uh, basis at this point. They're investigating all aspects of uh, air traffic in the area. Uh, all intelligence that, as they sift through it, uh, may have given them some indication that something was happening. At this point, though, there were no warnings, they say, this morning. 
uh, as they go back through this information, they may call through it and find some clue, but at this point they believe there is no warning. Thank you very much, John, which would please call us back as soon as you have something which would call into question immediately, of course, the notion of counter-terrorism uh, in an incident like this. <clears throat> now, nobody who's on watching television, watching Good Morning America today, for example, saw, at least those of us working on television, saw a first plane crash into the building. Um, much of the country watching television this morning will have seen the second plane uh, crash into the other tower. And we have, as you can see from a distance there, until we get our cameras on the ground, uh, producing material which we can put on the air, a pretty limited view. So we have no idea what the evacuation procedure is in the building. It's, it's we do know... Difficult. We're listening in the background. Uh, at this time, all elevators are out in both towers, according to the rescue workers on the scene. They put out an urgent call for Scott Air Packs uh, because they're climbing smoke-filled stairwells. They've got to go very high up to get to the target locations, and they're talking about people trapped in the smoke there. And this, of course, is reminiscent of, of, of 1993 when the explosions occurred at the Trade Towers last time. Exactly. John, is it standard operating procedure? You mentioned that all of the other principal government buildings in the city, Gracie Mansion, the mayor's official residence, and some of the other buildings will be evacuated. Is that a fairly standard anticipated operation? It is an existing plan um, that is on paper, but Peter, I have to say, uh, it's never been put into effect in New York. This is unprecedented, and I think um, as this develops, you'll see similar plans go into effect in Washington and potential target buildings, because they really have to take the position that they're under some form of attack here, at least as a precaution, till they sort this out. As we wait to get a better grasp of, of what now becomes a rescue operation of the people in the Twin Tread Towers, we're reminded here that the U.S. officials, according to Pentagon sources, have no warnings uh, today of any kind of terrorist attack. And if you listen to the news on a regular basis, you hear the Pentagon warning Americans worldwide of some impending terrorist attack. And here we are in the height of commercial <coughs> America, um, with, uh, with no warning whatsoever, no intelligence whatsoever, as far as we can tell, at least in these first couple of hours. No, and all of the latest intelligence, um, at least the basics of which I've been scanning for months, um, have focused on the high potential for attacks against American targets abroad. Indeed, uh, federal authorities and the intelligence community re have reported they've, they've interdicted and interrupted um, more than a dozen of those attacks by shutting terrorist cells down around the world. They've always been worried since the first attack on the World Trade Center that there would be another bold strike on U.S. soil. Mm. And of course there are any number of targets which have been high on counterintelligence's list in New York City, the Lincoln Tunnel, the United Nations, the Holland Tunnel, uh, the FBI headquarters, not to mention all of the city civic buildings which John mentions. President Bush is, by the way, going to speak very shortly to the nation about this, and then he's going to return to Washington. And we have on the phone our principal aviation analyst and expert, John Nance. Good morning, John. Good morning, Peter. What would you like to contribute to this? Because uh, one knows that it is indeed possible to fly an aircraft into a building if one intends to do so. If one intends to do so, that's correct. And unfortunately, when you've got something that has been as, uh, as worrisome a target uh, as, uh, as the World Trade Center, regardless of the way we've hardened it up uh, on the ground, they have apparently, whoever they is, picked the one vulnerable area. The thing that is most disturbing to me uh, is not only the, uh, uh, the, the fact, of course, that there are people more than likely in that building that have been directly affected by this, but that we may have an innocent load of passengers. Uh, the flash of that second aircraft across the screen uh, is disturbingly close to what you would call the plan form of an Airbus A319 or an Airbus 320. Uh, also of a 767 or something of that nature. And yeah, just uh, that's a large airplane. John, let me go slowly with you because, and we'll, a we'll actually put it on the screen again very slowly so that we can see it come across screen. Are you able to identify specifically the type of aircraft by looking at this videotape as it comes across? Can we roll I'm, that, please? I'm watching that right uh, as it comes across the screen. And uh, it, it is more than likely not a Boeing 737. That, uh, that profile, Peter, is very close to an Airbus uh, A320, A319. And who flies the Airbus 320, A318? We have quite a few airlines. Okay, so uh, that, uh, very few private ones. All right, and and with and John uh, comports a little bit here with at least these 
uh, initial reports that the FBI is investigating reports of a hijacking uh, just before the second crash uh, occurred. We had no... Um, John, let me just ask you one of the technical question about just flying in the World Trade Center. When yes. the first, when the first uh, incident occurred, um, it was reasonable for people to suspect that there that was an accident. Yes. Um, from a flying point of view, is the World Trade Center always something to worry about if you're taking off from one of New York City's airports? Not really. Hmm. Uh, and the fact that we have had all these years since that B-25 crashed into the Empire State Building tells you a lot about the flight paths around New York City. You, you have to be so disastrously out of contact and off course, and so many things would have to go wrong to imperil any of the buildings in Manhattan. The fact that it hasn't happened tells us uh, really how rare a situation it would have to be. Uh, John, the FAA immediately asked for New York City airports to suspend operations. We can confirm that Newark and LaGuardia have closed down. And Kennedy confirm? and uh, Teterboro and Westchester, yes. they've essentially asked all airports mm. within a 20-mile ra radius to put a hold on anything taken off. Teeter Bear Airport, which is in New Jersey, just on the west side of the Hudson River in Westchester, which is maybe 40, 50 miles north of New York City. They're all suspended operations. Standard, uh, easy to do, John, quick to do, it seems to have been so. Fortunately, very, very quick to do because uh, they're all controlled by air traffic control towers and they can put a halt to the operations with one phone call. Okay, John Nance, thanks very much. Call us back, will you, if you, uh, if you, if you learn anything. Peter, one of the difficulties they're going to face, as you can glean from this picture here, is the people who are trapped and need to be rescued are on the upper floors, but you see the plume of smoke covers the roof. The last explosion was at the bottom of the building and the smoke rose up, but they were able to make a series of daring rescues by landing, and they've trained for this and retrained landing police helicopters on the roofs of the Twin Towers and pulling people out. It's going to be very difficult, uh, since the roofs are now enveloped in smoke, for the police helicopters, which are arriving mm -hmm. at a landing zone now, just below the World Trade Center, to be able to get up there till that smoke dissipates. Um, and that's where they had expected to pull a lot of people out uh, this time, because they had so much success the last time. Mm -hmm. Similarly, John, if you look at the two buildings, it does appear that at least in the, in the northern tower there, or the left tower, as you see it on the screen, uh, below the incident, the building at least looks on the outside to be reasonably secure, um, and people will have a long, horrendous, terrifying walk down in a darkened building, um, but will at least be able to get out on the ground. By the way, Claire Shipman, uh, ABC's Claire Shipman, just called in. To, she's been checking with the FBI. She also says that the FBI had no warning whatsoever. Their crisis management operation in Washington is in place uh, in conjunction with the Federal Aviation Administration, they are all now, which makes perfect sense, focusing on uh, the recovery of survivors. Um, the New York Stock Exchange has, uh, has delayed indefinitely its opening uh, today. Uh, this, this will just have not only an extraordinary effect on the national psyche, one surmises, um, dissimilar perhaps, but but from what happened in Oklahoma City, but a very clear reminder to those of us in the United States that terrorism of a huge magnitude, with which we're somewhat more accustomed in the Middle East and in Africa, given the attacks on the U.S. embassies a couple of summers ago, but a reminder again that as far as international terrorism is concerned and people's anger and even desperation on this occasion with the United States is going to find itself manifest um, here on U.S. soil. John is the here's the president now in in Florida. I wonder if everybody knows there what's going on. We'll listen to him. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a, a difficult moment for America. I um, unfortunately will be going back to Washington after my remarks. Secretary of Rod Page and Lieutenant Governor <clears throat> will take the podium and discuss education. I do want to thank the folks here at. Uh, at the Booker Elementary School for their hospitality. Uh, today we've had a national tragedy. Uh, two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. I have spoken to the Vice President, to the Governor of New York, to the Director of the FBI, and have ordered that the full resources of the federal government uh, go to help the victims and their families and, the f and to conduct a full-scale investigation 
to hunt down and to find those folks who committed this act. Terrorism against our nation will not stand. And now if you join me in a moment of silence. May God bless the victims, their families, and America. Thank you very much. President clearly shaken, I think one can say, um, confirming what we think we all knew, which was the two aircraft um, in an act of terrorism uh, crashed into the twin trade towners. Nobody was quite certain about the first one uh, at the very outset, but the president absolutely, having talked to the vice president, the governor of New York, the director of the FBI, uh, now believing and confirming that we have two terrorist attacks on the World Trade Center and the president saying the two things which a president must say at a moment like this terrorism will not stand uh, which is an important thing for him to say but not always necessarily effective and God bless the victims and their families John Miller what are you picking up on the police radio um, we'll there was a you. there was a bit of a stir a moment ago because LaGuardia Tower reported urgently that there was another aircraft moving fast mm -hmm. in the no-fly zone. Now they've contacted that aircraft and they say it's a military aircraft that's rushed to the scene to uh, enforce mm -hmm. the no-fly zone and literally mm -hmm. be a presence in the area in case there is another plane headed for the building so that there'll be some uh, at least armed aircraft mm -hmm. up to confront it. Just think for a second, John, how, how you have drawn an extraordinary parallel. We, we think of no-fly zones as being in Something southern in Iraq. and northern Iraq, where the Iraqis are not allowed to fly. And if they do fly, they're going to be shot down. Now we have a no-fly zone um, all around the lower part of New York City and perhaps on the, on the northern area, too. All of the area's airports closed down and armed American aircraft in the air to shoot down anybody else who wants to take a shot at the place. I mean, those, those are the reports that are coming yeah. across the radio now, and, and if they're true, it's, it's quite incredible and certainly unprecedented. Well, it, it would also suggest, uh, as best you can tell, looking at it from this very sort of antiseptic uh, environment that we are all in in our newsrooms, is that the reaction has been fairly quick. New York City has an Office of Emergency Management. It's over here on the west side. It's, it's a great bunker. Um, which the city ironically, it's, it's located in the World Trade Center complex, although not in the in the Twin Towers. Just it's right north next door, of, north of the Trade Towers, right. in, in the World Trade Center, in the other northern World Trade Center there. And on an occasion like this, this is not one I, they they absolutely anticipate when they get going. They're talking very concerned with chemical and biological warfare. They've got extensive plans about that, which they very often demonstrate to the press. Um, Going to interrupt myself and everybody else for a second because one of our senior producers, Mark Obenhaus, uh, is on the phone and he saw the incident. Mark, you hear me? I do indeed, Peter. Go ahead. Um, well, I was leaving my house uh, to go to work at, and I walked down the street to go to the subway. I was at the corner of Franklin and West Broadway. And as I was approaching the subway, a tremendous roar uh, uh, went over my head and, and I looked up immediately and it was a plane um, and much lower than I've ever seen a plane in lower Manhattan and it was a large plane I couldn't <coughs> identify it as anything specific except that it was a commercial jet certainly um, and it it then it, my eyes followed it because this is approximately 15 blocks from the World Trade Center and it it just slammed right into it and was completely engulfed by the by the building. It was extraordinary. No, no wings flew off, nothing like that. It just went directly in, creating this sort of cavern-like hole. And, and suddenly then big, big uh, flames started protruding from it, and then, of course, smoke. And, and, and then debris started just catapulting. And, of course, the area that we're in, there's a great deal of foot traffic, and people are just approaching and beginning to just gasp at uh, and just the sight of the building itself, even if they hadn't seen it, uh, the actual incident, the actual impact, just the sight of this huge building in engulfed in flame with this massive cavernous hole in the side of it. And we stood there, I can't tell you the amount of time, I, I would estimate about 15 minutes. And, uh, and, and of course there's all kinds of services coming down, fire department and so forth. And then suddenly from my vantage point, which would be north of the building, the, sec the, the far tower suddenly exploded.
explodes in flames. Uh, uh, yet again, a similar kind of, a, of an event, and I now see, I've, I've run down the street to my home where I have the television on, and I saw the, that that too was another airplane. It, it, from our vantage point, you couldn't tell what exactly it was that hit the, hit the, hit the second tower, but it was a, a similar, seemingly almost like bomb blast, uh, and with flames and debris protruding wildly from, from the building. Mark, let me ask you a couple of more specific questions. You now confirm for us, I think, that it was the first attack on the tower that you saw. Yes. What, what direction was the aircraft coming from? It was coming from the north. It was coming it, from the north down over Manhattan itself? Yes. Um, it, well, it would have been flying roughly over the west side. Um, I'm, uh, I'm on, as I say, West Broadway, which is probably a quarter mile from the river. Um, so it was on a direct path north, from the north, uh, into, the, uh, into the north tower. Do you remember whether it had two engines? Three engines or four um, I engines? I do not. It was very quick. It, it struck me, uh, you know, the, 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 the profile, the, the, bo the body of the plane um, was of such scale that I immediately identified it as a commercial jet. I didn't, couldn't, it happened so quickly I couldn't tell whether it had windows on the side or what. It, I mean, it could very well have been a, some sort of a, of a uh, transport plane, but it was a large, large plane. Um, as opposed to occasionally down here, you do see smaller uh, prop planes or uh, smaller aviation uh, stuff that uh, flies around here, sometimes doing movies and things like that. But uh, in all my years down here, and I've lived down here for about 20 years within uh, walking distance easily of the building, I've never heard anything like this. And that's, what, that's why I, I just immediately glanced up and just followed the, the track of this sound and this huge plane that was swooping over my head. Could you see any markings on it whatsoever? No, I did not. It was too, too quick. I, 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 I can't uh, give you any kind of identifying help on, do, on, on what, it, what it was. Do you remember what color it was? Was it, was I, it? My impression was, uh, was that it had a tan uh, coloration to it. Mm -hmm. However, uh, the sun it was very low in the horizon, and I think uh, kind of orange. And it may have been simply the color of the sun reflecting off a silver um, exterior. I, I really am not sure of that. Okay, Mark, anything else? What's the, what's the, uh, what's the mood and the environment oh, down there at I, the I moment as if it's you. not I mean, hard to imagine? It, 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 everyone who, who glimpses it close up, it's quite different seeing it from the ground than on, on these television pictures that I'm now looking at because it's, it's close to you and you, you see what the impact must have been like and you see the kind of devastation that uh, has, has uh, incurred by, by the buildings and it's just uh, it's, it's, uh, it's frightening is uh, perhaps even too mild a word okay. um, it's absolutely uh, just a, a horrible horrible sight it, 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 it reminds you of the worst kind of effect mm. in movies that you know, you're reassured watching a movie that it's an effect, but this is not. Well, Mark, uh, you and I were supposed to have a meeting not long from now. Uh, we'd prefer you to go and work the story, if you would, and call us back as soon I as you indeed. can. I will indeed. Many thanks. Mark Obenhaus, okay. one of our senior producers on the phone who saw the incident, describes it as a large plane, not sure what the color was, not sure the number of engines it had, which, in his mind, he's a very experienced reporter, reflects the speed and surprise with which this aircraft, this is the first one we're talking about now, just before 9 o'clock, approached the World Trade Towers from the north, um, causing the first huge gap in the building. And, and Mark describes the, the plane being engulfed in some respects by the building. Didn't see wings fall off, saw it go absolutely, uh, uh, totally almost as he described it, into the building itself. And we now have had one of the enormous difficulties about terrorism, everybody knows, is that you, you you almost immediately get a claim of responsibility and you may get several and people's suspicions get ramped up given the obvious nature of people who they think are in, and, or know are involved in terrorism around the world. There has been a claim of responsibility according to the Raiders News Agency uh, made to Abu Dhabi television uh, in the Persian Gulf from something called the Palestinian DFLP. Uh, the Palestinian DFLP is something called the Democratic Front for the Liberation of Palestine. Um, it has been for many, many years one of the uh, most militant of the Palestinian organizations. Um, has been involved in violence before, has been involved in, uh, in, in other actions before, and it is the first organization to claim responsibility for this, though we have to caution you in all the obvious ways that before the day is over um, there may be any number of people who claim responsibility. Uh, 
The White House, of course, is, 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 has leapt to the forefront of people's concern this morning, and there is a plane circling the White House at the moment, uh, and they're clearing the grounds there. Um, we have, that's a, a report which may be misleading in that it may presume an attack, whereas we just discovered a moment ago that what we had with an additional airplane in New York airspace was a security operation. I think probably most Americans know that there is no building in the country uh, which is, which has heavily defended, I shouldn't say deemed secure, but um, a battery of anti-aircraft missiles uh, on the top of the White House itself. Uh, we've had an incident, as you know, in the past, uh, several years ago, where a small aircraft landed in the White House, uh, in the White House garden, and the pilot, uh, um, mentally deranged, as I recall at the time, uh, was killed. Um, but the White House is certainly, certainly been very heavily defended. And this plane circling the White House adds to the trauma that people are feeling today, but we have no idea precisely what that means. John Miller, you're listening. Uh, the scene is still in some degree of chaos, but the police have uh, set up a major mobilization point uh, just outside the building, and they've set up a tactical mobilization point. The major mobilization point is uh, for the responding units involved in the rescue. The tactical one is actually an armed mobilization point for security outside the World Trade Center. Now. Thanks very much. Let's go to the White House. Claire Shipman is on the phone. Claire, what's that we're looking at? Well, that's what we're trying to figure out right now. All we know is it's a gigantic plume of smoke coming from behind the old executive office building, and we're told that the White House itself, the West Wing, at the very least, is being evacuated, that our personnel from there are being asked to leave. We've sent people um, running over there to try to find out what it is, but we don't know yet. Now, the old executive office building is to the slightly to the west and a fraction to the south. So we are looking southwest from a camera just across Lafayette Park, which is north of the White House. The White House is to the left side, out of your picture. Maybe even the cameraman could give us some appreciation. But you have no idea? Was that an explosion? Did you hear we anything? Did not, we did not hear it. In fact, we were trying to figure out from the White House what security precautions they were taking around the White House. and in the wake of the um, apparent attacks on the World Trade Center, and we suddenly just saw the smoke rising from behind the old executive office building. We have people on their way there now, but it's, it's like nothing I've ever seen. I mean, we've never seen that kind of smoke coming from, from anything that I, would ordinarily occur here. I must also tell you, Claire, I think if you think about what's behind the, the EOB there, you're really down uh, in pretty open area. It doesn't look like a place where a building would be on fire. No, that's right, although there are a number of buildings just behind the old executive office building on G Street that could potentially be on fire, but nothing you would necessarily think of as a target. Um, apparently, we're also... Claire, let me interrupt you for a second. We now have fire confirmed at the Pentagon. I've, John McCrethy at the Pentagon can hear me. John, please get in touch immediately if you can and brief us in there. John McCrethy has actually been evacuated from the Pentagon, and... Parts of the Pentagon are indeed being evacuated. Um, we want to hold our breath here, it just seems to me, for a second, and, 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 and not get into a mode that the country is under attack. But we now have two attacks on the Twin Trade Tower Center. U.S. buildings, city buildings completely evacuated in New York City. We have this mysterious black smoke at the southwest corner of the White House, which is to say there's something going on behind the old executive office building. We now have a report that fire has been confirmed at the Pentagon. ABC's John McCrethy, our Pentagon correspondent, who's been plugging in as quickly to the intelligence and counterintelligence units there this morning, has been temporarily evacuated. But that is as much as we know for sure at the moment. John Miller, go back to what you're hearing on your nets. Um, actually, it's interesting. Uh, in, the, uh, in New York City, uh, they're reporting um, on what we're seeing here also, essentially trying to uh, tell everybody that uh, heightened security is important now. John, I apologize. There's a lot of us here. What are we listening to there? Say again. Say again, please. Come here, John. No. Good. Try to correct. So we have bomb I, squads. I think you're going to see a lot of this, and I think we were talking about this uh, a few minutes ago. In fact, uh, 
when I was telling you that in New York they were evacuating the municipal building, the United Nations, uh, Gracie Mansion, which is the mayor's residence, all potential targets, I suggested to you that shortly in Washington you'll probably be seeing the same kind of reaction at sensitive uh, symbolic locations and apparently that's become more than a concern but perhaps a reality. Okay, we do know, or at least the Associated Press is now reporting, that an aircraft crashed near the Pentagon and the west wing of the White House, as Claire Shipman told us, was evacuated amid these threats of terrorism. I guess what's... First of all, let me go to another eyewitness. ABC's Bill Blakemore, one of our senior reporters, has been an eyewitness to the New York incident. Billy, on the phone? Yes, I am, Peter. Go I'm, ahead. I'm down at 12th Street. Uh, looks like we're more than a mile north of this very surrealistic site, and business has completely come to a stop here. Looks like throughout uh, lower Manhattan, people standing in the streets, cell phones aren't working, a few of these uh, phone booths, such as I'm talking to you from now, are working. One man uh, just shaking his head said to me a few moments ago, I was supposed to be at a meeting in the building at 10.30 this morning, and then I saw the second plane uh, hit the tower in this flash of light. Um, there's, a, there's a complete cessation of regular life. There's one delivery man standing here looking like he doesn't know where to go with this uh, stack of beer crates. So all of lower Manhattan is just standing in the streets on this sunny morning looking at this unrealistic sight in front of us, this gray smoke coming out of the trade center. Okay, Bill, talk to as many people as you can. Call us back when you can. Um, let's return to Washington visually at the moment. Just take a look at that picture. That smoke behind the executive office building, uh, which is right next uh, to the White House, we now believe is from a fire in the courtyard of the Pentagon, or at least where an aircraft appears to have crashed in the general vicinity of the Pentagon. And now the Pentagon is southwest from the White House across the Potomac River, and what we think we may be seeing there, <coughs> emphasis on think, is smoke uh, in the distance uh, rather than uh, immediately behind the Pentagon. Precautions being taken everywhere. The U.S. Capitol is now being uh, evacuated as a precautionary measure. The U.S. Treasury, according to at least one eyewitness, is being evacuated as a precautionary measure. And there was an explosion outside the Pentagon. Um, and that's, a, that's an issue of eyewitnesses from both inside and from outside, but we're not quite sure what we're looking at. And we are, we are looking now at Air Force One. We've just been told by ABC's Ann Compton that there's been a serious investigation now, or serious check of Air Force One before the president, who's been in Florida, gets on it and flies back to Washington. All of this, of course, adds to the tension, uh, adds to the fear, but all of it makes absolute common sense. And there is no aircraft in the world, to the best of my knowledge, which is given as intense security as Air Force One, which is what any aircraft the president flies on is designated, of course, um, uh, it, wherever it, it is in the world. And today it's been at Sarasota in Florida. I want to get somebody to fix some monitors here for me, please. I want this monitor in front of me here to look like that monitor so I know what I'm looking at right now. Thank you. Um, and uh, the President Will, having, having already spoken very briefly to the nation, saying, as we said, the uh, the obvious and necessary thing that terrorism will not stand, calling for a moment of silence um, uh, to, to acknowledge, to recognize, to honor, to deeply sympathize with the victims of today's attacks. Uh, the president then said he would uh, come back immediately to Washington. I think we all know that the president is never out of touch with the events of the moment, uh, wherever he is. But as of the moment, listen to this, as of the moment, from west to east in the United States, there are no airplanes taking off that are at least under the control or have, are obeying the Federal Aviation Administration. Um, at O'Hare Airport in Chicago, for example, planes are still landing, but all departures have been stopped. The Sears Tower in Chicago. Uh, Chicago's great landmark tower has been closed and there are no aircraft taking off in the US. This is clearly because while we have not been able to confirm, well, we've not been able to confirm 
precisely what happened. There is for the Pentagon. In That is the courtyard of the Pentagon. The Pentagon is indeed exactly what it's described, uh, just on the other side of the Potomac River um, from the Capitol. And there you see fires burning in the courtyard of the, of the Pentagon, confirming what we had, what we've been told almost immediately by eyewitnesses. We've also been told it was a plane crash. So our, our belief at the moment is that an aircraft has crashed into either the courtyard itself or into that particular side of the building. Um, parts of the Pentagon um, have been confirmed. Oh, you can hear it, just listen. That's what it looks like from just across on the north side of the White House. Those are the same incidents, to the best of our knowledge, the same incidents. And if you look at the, the amount of smoke at the Pentagon, this is huge. This is huge. The State Department is now being evacuated as a precaution. We're simply not able to get a good handle yet on what precisely happened at the Pentagon. But we do know that nowhere in the United States, at no commercial airport under the control of the FAA, are aircraft taking off. And this is in large measure because um, it has now been reported by several news agencies that the first aircraft, I beg your pardon, the one of the two aircraft which crashed into the Twin Trade Towers just before and just after 9 o'clock Eastern Time this morning, was hijacked out of Boston. We do not know the airline. We're not able absolutely to confirm that, but there are several reports, and, there, and that led to the intense concern um, with the FAA and with the National Intelligence Services, the, the, all of the airspace um, in the general area of New York City, and now subsequently in Washington and everywhere else, be sealed as one would try to seal a building uh, in order to prevent a third or a third and fourth whatever uh, incident similar to the first two. But that is the Pentagon, and as ABC's John Miller just reported a moment ago, um, the scene on the ground in New York City is still pretty chaotic. Emergency rigs, emergency services have converged on the Twin Trade Towers at the very same time that other high-profile links Nancy Gabriel, I'm not sure. Do we know if the United Nations has been evacuated yet? Uh, the police department on the New York side has ordered the United Nations evacuated. In fact, they did that very early on, um, almost immediately after it became apparent uh, what was going on here. Uh, right now, at the World Trade Center, the emergency units are reporting there's still debris falling onto the street on the uh, east side of the building, including uh, a second body, which has fallen from the wreckage uh, on the upper floors. They're also talking about um, people who are on the roof, and they've asked uh, if the aviation unit uh, from the police department can get up there and uh, pick people up. But again, because of that smoke, as we discussed before, mm -hmm. they're going to have real trouble uh, edging in there. As we look at the Pentagon, again, we have to say that sometimes the camera and the eye don't see precisely what is happening. We have now had eyewitness reports from our sources in Washington say they did see a plane crash in the vicinity of the Pentagon. We're looking at it um, from the western, from the Washington end, uh, which would be to the east of the Pentagon, slightly to the northeast of the Pentagon itself. And it looks very much as if there is fire in the courtyard itself in that central quad. But you can see a small plume of smoke on the, on the northern side of the building as well. At least I think it's the north. Yes, it is the northern side of the building as well. And we're not um, absolutely certain. The Associated Press, um, it, quoting a senior U.S. official, um, or quoting a U.S. official, is now saying affirmatively that one of the two planes that crashed into the World Trade Center was hijacked after takeoff from Boston. At this time of day, um, it, any number of aircraft taking off from Boston to go to ABC's John McCarthy believes um, that it was an American Airlines flight Flight number 11, bound for Los Angeles. And I realize when, when, when saying that, we're going to put the fear of God into a lot of people on the West Coast and, and people who know, 
connected with that flight. But our Pentagon correspondent, John McCrethy, just reports into us that American Airlines Flight 11, bound for Los Angeles from Boston, was actually hijacked out of Boston. That's a helicopter over the Pentagon. Um, I apologize to the audience. We have two separate monitors here. They show different pictures. Could you tell me which one the audience is seeing at home so I can work with that? And may I not have to ask again? Thanks very much. Um, I don't. And, um, and so we now have the first incident at the Trade Center and the second trade incident at the Trade Center as two aircraft. We know that one of them, we know at this moment that one of them, according to um, officials talking both to the Associated Press and a confirmation from ABC's John McCarthy at the Pentagon that it was a commercial aircraft, commercial aircraft, um, that was hijacked out of Boston, which could have been any time before uh, 9 o'clock this morning because the first attack on the Trade Tower was um, just before 9 o'clock and the second one was after that. And John Miller, you're listening. Um, actually, it's, uh, it's interesting. Uh, there's, no, there's no way to characterize any part of this as fortunate, but if you look at cities who are prepared to handle an incident like this, um, and as you've seen New York's emergency response to this, it is probably one of the few places that is, that is prepared with the kind of equipment, response, and rescue efforts that could actually address something like this. And Washington is probably the other. Um, immediately when this happened, the entire emergency service unit, which comprises hundreds of specially trained cops, was mobilized to the scene. Now a triage center, um, a triage center uh, for the injured has been set up just around the corner from the World Trade Center. It's um, an incredible scene down there with a tremendous amount of equipment. Um, the Federal Aviation Administration has actually gone even further than it did a few minutes ago. It, it was uh, forming all, asking all planes not to take off. Now the FAA has ordered all aircraft currently in the air over the United States to land at the nearest airport. Now you can imagine what may be happening or what they think might be happening in some part of the country that there is somebody else on some aircraft coming from somewhere or going somewhere <clears throat> with evil in their with evil intentions and so all aircraft currently in the air over the United States have been ordered to land at the nearest airport. I think one what of you're going to see in sec, John, I just want to check one thing because uh, one of the very first people the president talked to was the director of the FBI and Pierre Thomas who covers the Justice Department and the FBI for us has been here. Um, they may think they prepare for this kind of thing, Pierre, but man, it must have been a shock. Stunning shock. Uh, the FBI Special Operations Center is now in full alert. The FBI mm. extremely concerned that there would be additional attacks. Normally when you have a situation like this, they immediately get on the line with the CIA, the various intelligence agencies, trying to get a sense of who might have been planning something. But right now, the first order of business is to protect against a second attack, third attack. The feeling is normally when you have this kind of situation, there will be more attacks almost immediately. Let's go to the Trade Tower again, because, John, we now have a... What do we have? We don't... It looks like a, a new plume, a new large plume of smoke. Now, it may be that something fell off the building. It may be that something has fallen. We, we don't know, to be perfectly honest. But that is what you're looking at, is the current. That, that's the scene at this moment at the World Trade Center. Dan Daler from ABC's Good Morning America is down uh, in, in the general vicinity. Dan, can you tell us what has just happened? Yes, Peter. It's, it's Don Daler down here. I'm four blocks north of the World Trade Center. The second building that was hit by the plane has just completely collapsed. The entire building has just collapsed as if a demolition team set off when you see the old demolitions of these old buildings. It My folded God. down on itself and it is not there anymore. That should be it. it Thanks very much, Dan. Collapsed. The whole side has collapsed? The whole there? building has collapsed. The whole building has collapsed? The building has collapsed. That's the southern tower you're talking exactly. about. Exactly. The second building that we witnessed the airplane enter had been the top half had been fully involved in flame it just collapsed there is panic on the streets thousands of people running up church street which is what i'm looking out on 
trying to get away, but the entire, at least as far as I can see, the top half of the building, at least half of it, I can't see below that, half of it just started with a gigantic rumble, folded in on itself, and collapsed in a huge plume of smoke and dust. We're talking about massive casualties here at the moment, and we have... Whew, That is extraordinary. There is panic on the streets. There are people screaming and running from the site. The gigantic plume of smoke has reached me, and I'm probably a quarter of a mile north of there. Peter. Now, this is a... This is what it looked like moments ago. My God. Southern Tower, 10 o'clock Eastern Time this morning, just collapsing on itself. This is a place where thousands of people work. We have no idea what caused this. Um, if you wish to bring uh, anybody who's ever watched a building being demolished on purpose knows that if you're going to do this, you have to get at the, at the under infrastructure of a building and bring it down. Peter? Yes, Dan. Uh, what, what appeared to happen from my vantage point, the top part of the building was totally involved in fire, and there, was, it, there appeared to be no effort possible to put that fire out. It looked like the top part of the building was so weakened by the fire that it just, the weight of it collapsed the rest of the building. That's what appeared to happen. I did not see anything happening at the base of the building. It all appeared to start at the top and then just collapse the rest of the building by the sheer weight of the top. There was no explosion or anything at the base part of it, but I, I did see that the top part of it started to, to collapse. The walls started to bulge out, bricks, glass things coming, coming out, and then it collapsed in on itself, and it appeared to just fold down from there, from the very top. Thanks, Don, very much. Um, just looking at that, I don't know why, but I'm, yeah. when was the last time the United States was attacked in this fashion? It was Pearl Harbor in 1941. Um, from the scene now, uh, there's obviously ma massive casualties. Uh, usually during these things, there's a, a little bit of a high pitch, but basic calm over the police radios uh, among the emergency workers. Um, I can hear them screaming, uh, signal 1013, uh, which is the police code for help, uh, calling for help at the triage center, where other people who are already injured have been injured more, um, confirming that the the building has collapsed, uh, dozens of officers, more civilians are injured, and we don't know, although I'd have to suggest, given the size of that building, what progress the evacuation was in um, of the tower that uh, collapsed. Yes, uh, Pierre, Pierre Thomas. Uh, one thing I might add is that in recent years, the U.S. government has been preparing for massive attacks, but it's been primarily focused on biological, often, yes, often bombing attacks. One of the things I have not heard discussed at all in government circles is the notion that someone would hijack a plane and perhaps fly it into a building. So one of the questions that I'm sure that will come out of this, if this indeed is a terrorist attack, is what kind of defenses did the U.S. have in place to deal with an event like this? Well, we talked about that even, Pierre, just before you came and joined us, because at the Emergency Management Center, which is just literally in the same complex as the Trade Towers, uh, they talk at great length about their preparations for a biological, a chemical warfare attack, how they closed tunnel. I mean, they've been very efficient, taken it very seriously for many years. I'd be a little surprised if the notion of an airborne attack on a United States target had not been, had not been discussed. But the notion of the intelligence services knowing absolutely nothing of what is going on today and saying openly right away they had no warnings whatsoever uh, is, and you say something very important, if this is a terrorist attack, we just keep saying that in a repeated basis. Um, not having any notion whatsoever of what's going on is to be reminded not only of the efficiency of terrorism, but just reminded of the efficiency of terrorism. At it's, uh, it's ironic. There's a, there's a chilling story. Uh, Lou Shalero of the FBI, um, who was part of the capture of Ramzi Youssef, who was the mastermind of the World last Trade. bombing of the World Trade Center, 
told me this story that he was flying over the World Trade Center in a helicopter with the suspect Ramzi Yosef next to him after he was captured in Pakistan. And as they passed over, Lou Shalero uh, nudged him and said to Ramzi Yosef, uh, you see, it's still standing. And Ramzi Yosef smiled and said to the FBI's assistant director, it wouldn't be if I'd had more money. Um, this was... In other words, more money to buy explosives, more money to run a more efficient operation than the one he ran from New Jersey in 93. Exactly. And I mean, we may have seen uh, the second coming of that plan.